And joining me from London is Arthur Turrell, the Deputy Director for Research and Economics at the ONS uh, Data Science Campus. Uh, Arthur, thank you very much for your time. Now, I think most of us woke up this morning not knowing what nuclear fusion is. Clearly, this is a massive scientific breakthrough. Can you just explain to us what is the significance of this uh, experiment? Great note, Sam. Speaking in a personal capacity today. So we are witnessing a moment in history. Um, controlling the power source of the stars is, I think, the greatest technological challenge humanity has ever undertaken. And scientists have struggled to show that you can get more energy out from fusion than you put in since the 1950s. So uh, it's just being confirmed in the press conference now. Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory in the US have finally done it. They've smashed this goal. And this is going to electrify efforts to eventually build a clean, carbon-free power source from fusion reactions. Is it the unicorn of energy sources? Look, all energy sources have pros and cons. Um, so actually, what I think we need is, is a portfolio of different energy sources. But fusion has some qualities that I think make it really exciting. And that's why people have stuck with it through the decades, even though scientifically it's so difficult. So it's carbon-free. Um, there's enough fuel around um, just in seawater to keep the world going for thousands, if not millions of years. And it doesn't have any chance of meltdown. So it's very safe for a nuclear technology. And although it does produce some radioactive waste, it's very low level and is expected to be safe after about 100 years. And it's only from the container where the reactions happen rather than as a, a product of the process itself. So for all of those reasons and the fact that it can take up quite a small space and produce lots of energy, people are really excited about fusion uh, adding to our portfolio of energy sources. We heard there from the US Energy Secretary that the aim is to have commercial fusion within a decade. Do you think that's actually possible? That's a really tight timeline. I'm so excited to hear that level of ambition. And, you know, it's never about the number of years. It's always about the amount of investment the amount of innovation and the amount of interest. And I think one of the important effects of hitting this goal, net energy gain, is going to be to galvanise people um, to put that innovation, interest and investment into fusion to make it uh, a real power source. Again, just coming back to the, the science itself, I mean, we've seen what happened with the COVID uh, with pandemic where people pull together from all corners of the globe to develop vaccines at a record-breaking pace. Given what you've just said, do you not think with the, the climate crisis that we're now facing that the, the pressure is on to develop this uh, source of energy? Absolutely. Um, look, we're still using, I think, around 80% of total energy coming from fossil fuels. And apart from climate change, they create terrible problems of air pollution. And many countries around the world don't enjoy the level of energy consumption that, you know, people in the US, the UK, France enjoy. And, um, you know, energy brings all kinds of great things in life. Um, so if we can get clean energy sources online quicker, uh, then we can do a, an awful lot of good for society and for humanity. Um, so absolutely the pressure is on. And this seems like a great thing to get scientists working on across the world. You mentioned there that it's extremely safe, but could it be used for dangerous purposes? Um, so, as I've mentioned, there, there are various reasons why it's safe. Um, I think that um, nuclear fusion is much less of a risk for nuclear pro proliferation of weapons than nuclear fission is, because what we've learned from the history of nuclear weapons is you always need to have fission and fusion together. You can't do it just with the fusion bit. And the beauty of what people at Lawrence Livermore have done, what other approaches to fusion for energy have done with magnets, is that there's no role for nuclear fission in the process at all. And that means it's almost impossible um, to turn it to a, uh, an aim where you'd use a weapon. You've seen how big the uh, National Ignition Facility is, how complicated it is, how it requires all those laser beams. Um, it's just not practical. But what it could be is a really good peaceful technology for energy. And finally, what are the practical challenges to overcome to get it to that point where it can be commercially used? Yeah, there are. Uh, there is a long road to go between this scientific demonstration and commercial viability. And of course, the facility, the clue is in the name, National Ignition 
facility. It was only built to get ignition. It was only built to achieve this scientific feasibility. Now, if we think about the things that would have to change to make this commercially viable, um, this laser can shoot maybe once a day. Um, actually, for a commercial plant, it would need to fire maybe 10 times a day. Uh, the energy that, it, that is used to power up the lasers isn't counted in the scientific uh, feasibility. So uh, we need to get to a gain not of 1.2, but to a factor of 30. That's quite a big jump. Um, and also, of course, the most important thing, it's got to be economical as well. Now, we don't know um, whether those things will be true or not, but these are really engineering and economics challenges. They're much easier than this initial scientific challenge, and they're not things we've put lots of resources in. And of course, there are lots of other promising approaches to fusion that might eventually be more economical as well. So I think people are really optimistic now that we've broken through this scientific barrier. Arthur Turrell, thank you so much again for explaining to a layperson just how extraordinary this uh, announcement is.